The objective in 4.2 is to find the area of a region in a plane. In order to do that, we are going to have to use sigma notation to evaluate sums and find the limit of a sequence as n approaches infinity. Let's recall first sigma notation. The sum of n terms, the sigma is for sum, and it looks like this, where the n represents the upper limit, and the 1 represents the lower limit, and the a sub i is the formula that we're using, and we're plugging in the lower limit up to the upper limit and adding them together. That's the sum. So for example, just to take this one, we're starting at i equals 1, so that's what we're plugging in first, and it gets plugged into where the i is. So 3 times 1 minus 1, that'll be our first term. That will get added to the second term. So after 1 comes 2, 3 times 2 minus 1. Add that to the next term, 3 times 3 minus 1, and so on and so forth until we reach the upper limit, which is 5, and we can see that by looking at the notation. We simplify this and add it all up, and our final answer is 40. 40 is the sum. Now ultimately, we're going to have larger sums than that, and we are not necessarily going to have an upper limit that is known. So we're going to have to know some formulas and shortcuts that we're going to have to use in our sums. So just some properties to start off with. A constant multiple, we can pull it outside of the sum. It's like using the distributive property, pulls that out. Factoring is another way to think about that. If we have a constant that we're taking a sum of n times, that's the constant times n. Think of it like the sum from i equals 1 to 100 of 5. That means we're doing 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 from the first 5 to the 100th 5. That's 5 times 100. We have 100 of them. <clears throat> we can add or subtract sums, break up a sum or difference into the sum of 1 plus or minus the sum of the other 1. And then we've got the shortcuts. These are the shortcuts. So the first three, one, two, and three, those are our properties. The last three, those are shortcuts. And you will have to know these by heart. So make a note that you want to memorize these. There um, could be more formulas, but we're not necessarily going to use the other ones. The sum of i, the sum of i squared, the sum of i cubed, those formulas we want to use. Here's a quick look at how they can be used. So first I'm going to use the second property because I see I'm subtracting terms. So I'm going to break it up into the difference of sums. So I'm going to start with the sum from i equals 1 to, this is 50 at the upper limit, of 5i squared minus the sum from i equals 1 to 50 of 3. So I'm doing property number two here. Next, I can use the distributive property or factoring to pull that five out in front to just leave the i squared by itself. So now I have five times the sum from i equals one to 50 of just i squared minus, this is just the constant, so this is going to be using the third property. So I'm not gonna do anything with that yet. Then I'm gonna use the formula for i squared, and that's number 5 right here, n being the upper limit. So n is 50 times 50 plus 1 times 2 times 50 plus 1 as the numerator, all divided by 6. Don't forget about the 5 that we factored out, so let's put that. And then the constant. The constant property that's here is that it's just 3 50 times. So it's 3 times 50. Simplify that to clean it up, and if you do, you get 214,475.